Hello. Hey guys. So um, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Frank, and I've been uh, helping out with Professor Duffy's morning 10 a.m. section for studio. And uh, so I am a full-time tutor. I tutor organic chemistry and physics. And what I do is I tutor my students and then I make videos based on those sessions after I figure out what works and what didn't work so well, and also what uh, students tend to get confused on. This semester and moving forward, I'm going to be trying to make a few physics videos every now and then, like this one. So if you have any suggestions, ideas, uh, feel free to let me know in case you want to reach out for tutoring, questions, resources, etc. Et you can contact me at orgomadeeasy.org. And for my regular viewers, uh, yeah, I'm going to be making some physics videos for you guys. So when you're done with organic chemistry, you can uh, check out some physics videos. Alright, so anyways, um, for those of you who are in PY 106 at BU, uh, spring 2017, wow, 2017. But yeah, this is for you guys, and for those of you who aren't here in that class, I'll still give you the handout so you can see. But this video is going to be about resistor capacitor circuits. And uh, it's on page 38 of your workbook, so it should look something like this. Alright, and uh, yeah, I noticed today, Friday, in uh, studio, there seems to be a lot a bit of confusion and some misconceptions, especially about capacitors. What I wanted to do is to make this video and show you guys how I think about capacitors and hopefully clear up some misconceptions. Alright? So, first things first, I wanted to focus on just the electron flow in the circuits for the three cases. Because I think if you get that down, it'll be much easier to do the uh, actual problem where you're asked to find like the voltage across resistors A and B, uh, the current through, you know, resistors A and B, the capacitors, current voltage, yada yada yada. Alright? So, yeah, let's do that. For case one, it's at time is equal to zero seconds, you like freeze time, uh, the capacitor is uncharged, meaning both plates are totally neutral, and then, oh, so when they're uncharged, both plates are totally neutral, the, uh, Professor Duffy tells you that it's like a closed switch, okay? So meaning, um, meaning it's just like a wire, basically. It's a closed switch, there's no resistance whatsoever, it's just like a regular wire, okay? And then, let's add this in. Now our circuit has a battery here, the big part is like the positive end of the battery. Positive, positive, positive. And the smaller part is the negative end. So negative, negative, negative. Alright. So anyways, what's actually gonna happen is that at zero seconds, once you hit play and let time go on, electrons are gonna start from this top plate of the capacitor. Uh, there are protons and electrons here, but only the electrons can move, protons are stuck. So the electrons are the negative charges are going to start from this top plate, go up, go left, because you're going to be kind of attracted to the positive end of the battery, and as they go over, they're going to get kind of pumped down, forced, by, forced down by the battery to this side, and go uh, counterclockwise, and go onto this plate here. And as a result, this plate is going to get more electrons, and it's going to become the negative plate of our capacitor. And this top plate is losing electrons, and they're going here to the bottom plate, so the top plate is going to be the positive plate of the capacitor. But a misconception is that electrons are going to be flowing from here to up here. That's not true. Electrons are not going to go from up down, uh, up to down, or down to up. No electrons are going to cross that gap because electrons can't cross through like air. Okay? They need they need like wires, something conducting, to cross through. So this top plate is going to become the positive plate of our capacitor. And then this bottom plate is going to be the negative plate of our capacitor. So the electron flow, once again, is electrons going here, here, through the resistors, or resistor A, down here, through the battery, and then counterclockwise, up to here. Yeah. And in this first scenario, uh, at zero seconds, this uh, path has no resistance technically because it's like a closed switch. So um, all the current, all the electrons, and also I'm going to be talking about electron flow. Uh, when we talk about currents, we um, I know in class they usually go from positive to negative, but I think it's easier to think about it in terms of just electrons. So 
electrons are going to flow this way, and no electrons are going to go this way at all, because this path has resistance. But this path has no resistance, because at this, at the, only at this moment, it's like a close switch. So like a wire. No resistance. It's just going to go right through. Imagine like the capacitor wasn't there, and it was just a straight line. All the electrons would just go through this path. There's no reason to go through this path with uh, more resistance. Okay? But then the moment uh, some electrons hop onto this plane of the capacitor, and there's going to be a potential difference, because this is going to be positive now, and then this is going to be negative. Well, the moment that happens, and there's a potential difference, or a voltage, then there's going to be some resistance in that capacitor at like t is equal to, I don't know, 0.5 of a second, or maybe even 0.1 of a second. The moment that happens, a very small percentage of electrons are going to start going down this path, because this path now has resistance. So I would say like 90%, 99% of the electrons are going through here, 1% is going through there. And then as time goes on and on, the voltage is going to increase, 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 more electrons are loaded up onto this negative plate, the potential goes up, the resistance is going to go up as well, and more electrons are going to flow down this path. And that's when we get to here, case two. The time when the capacitor is already charged up to 8 volts. It's 8 volts. Okay, so at this point here, the current, there's definitely current going through this, um, through this loop, I guess, through this path. Because there's, there's some resistance here, and it's not like before where there's infinite, there's infinitely, infinitely no resistance to this path. Okay, so at this point, electron flow is like this. Down, through here, up here, but it, it also branches out here, it goes through this loop as well, and it rejoins here. So the current, um, current in terms of electrons, is gonna go over here, down here, split up, and meet up again here. And that's kind of like the basis of the junction rule. For currents, at junctions are conserved, meaning when they separate and they meet up again. It must add up to whatever it was before, and whatever the current is here must add up, must be equal to the, current, the sum of the currents at both uh, of both parts here. Okay, all right. So that's the electron flow there, and then down here, case three. What's the scenario? It's the time when the capacitor is at constant voltage. So Duffy gives you guys a great hint. It's like an open loop switch. So what's true about open switches? Let's say, well, there should be a switch here, but if the switch is open, no electron flow, right? Well, no electron flow through the capacitor now. Because right now, it's maximally charged in this situation. The battery can't force any more electrons to go from the positive plate to the negative plate. And it's charged at some unknown voltage. But basically, uh, the electrons are flowing. Let's see. Well, there's no more electrons going through here. but electrons are flowing still this way, but there's no, there's no flow up to the negative plate because the electrons would rather, think of it this way, electrons would rather go through this side because at this point, this, uh, this side has less resistance and the capacitor is just, is just maximally charged at this point, so you can't force any more electrons to go through there. So, yeah, it's, it's almost like if you've uh, taken out the capacitor from the scenario altogether, or just think of it like an open switch. So the wire is broken, and then it's just like this. So it's technically like what kind of a circuit? Parallel or series? So it's series, you are correct. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, at time is equal to zero. Electrons are only flowing through this loop. And then when the capacitor is at 8 volts, they're going through both loops. They start here, go up, branch out, be back up. And then here, it's maximally charged, just through here. Okay. So believe it or not, that's going to make the problem way easier for you guys. Okay. Okay, so just to recap real quickly, main thing, main misconception, electrons are being uh, you can think of it like they're being sucked over by the positive 
part of the battery, they're being the electrons are going up, pulled over, uh, pumped down, and then forced to go into this negative plate, and then they stop there. They do not cross that gap of air to the positive plate. They are forced to constantly be pumped, 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 and stuck on this negative plate here. And that is why you get a negative plate and a positive plate. This plate just gets more and more positive over time. In fact, I, would, I should probably show the positive getting bigger and bigger. But yeah, anyways, so go ahead and try, out, try finding out these values. I changed the sequence of the, uh, the columns and rows because it just makes more sense to me and it's more organized this way. So if it, if it looks a little different, that's because it is. Okay, so try it out yourself, hit pause, and then we'll regroup and we can check your answers. All right? Okay, see you in a little bit. Say pause.